everyone for this video we're going to talk about percentiles for group data now what is our learning target by the way so we have I can determine the percentiles of a group data and by the way guys so this will be our guide questions that hopefully you can answer after watching this video so this time I'm gonna share to you the formula to be used in finding the desired percentile for group data. So before we proceed with our activity, be familiar first with the, the variables or the terms or symbols that we've used here in the formula. Actually, these are almost the same with the, what we've used in our previous measure of position that we've discussed. So take note of the following. So let us have our practice exercise so that you will be able to understand thoroughly on how are we going to get the start percentile for group data. So for our first problem guys, let's gonna use this given frequency distribution table. So um, before we start with that, take note that if in case we don't have the FDT yet or the frequency distribution table is not yet given, of course, we really need to create our own frequency distribution table based on the preferred class given. But here, fortunately, the FDT is already given and with that, we can now um, proceed with the computation itself of our desired percentile for group data. Now here, let's gonna start with P of 10. So before we proceed to the formula itself of our percentile, so let us complete first the third column of our FDT because this is uh, very necessary as well for our formula afterwards and at the same time very necessary in our first step in finding the uh, value of our desired percentile so we need to um, fill in this first so I know you are particular already or you know already on how are we going to come up with our cumulative or less than cumulative frequency column now we really need to have this less than cumulative frequency column because this is where we are going to base later on our p of k class so like for example let's start solving first um the location of our p of 10 so let us substitute first in our formula k n divided by 100 so by the way again to be specific our formula to find the p of k class would be k n divided by 100 okay so k stands for the desired percentile and n of course for your total frequency or sample size so 10 because we are looking for p of 10 and then our n is 30 as you can see in the table so 10 times 30 we would have 300 and then 300 divided by 100 then we would have p of 10 is equal to 3 so by the way 3 here is just the location not literally the value already of our p of 10 so now to identify where is our p of 10 class let us take a look with our cumulative frequency column so which class interval do you think does p of 10 belongs so actually here in 70 to 74 so because the cumulative frequency here is 3 so i know you understand already and how are we going to look for the classes based on the cumulative frequency column so here so it belongs to 70 to 74 class interval so now since we were able to identify already the p of 10 class we can now proceed with identifying our x of lower boundary and cumulative frequency um, below um, frequency of our p of 10 and then the class interval itself so for our lower boundary so again let us take a look with the lower limit of our p of 10 class so it's 70 let us just deduct it always by 0 0.5 and with that we can have 69.5 and for our n we do have 30 
and for our cumulative frequency below or before our p of 10 class as you can see here below or before there's nothing since 70 to 74 is our lowest class interval and with that we can simply put a zero if this is the scenario and frequency of the p of 10 class so here I highlighted so that we can easily um, identify or we can focus with the P of 10 class itself. And lastly, for our class interval, so we have 5. So, if you created the frequency distribution table, this is what um, we've got in our step 3. But since the table a while ago is already given, how are we going to find our I again? So, just simply look here and in our class interval you just simply make use of our formula upper limit minus lower limit plus one to so 74 minus 70 plus one so that would be five or else you may simply count manually so from 70 so 70 71 72 73 74 and we do have five so it's the same answer so i is equal to five so if gonna if you're going to use other class intervals so you will arrive with the same answer like for example 80 to 84 so 84 minus 80 plus 1 so it would be still 5 and if you're going to use 90 and 94 so 94 minus 90 plus 1 it would still be 5 so it's your choice okay now let's move on with our formula since we do have here our necessary data already we gathered already or identified already so now let's su simply substitute in our formula and so we have here our lower boundary then we have our n our k then cumulative frequency before or below and then we do have our frequency of the p of 10 class and lastly for our i all the um fonts in yellow so these are the values that we've substituted so next is of course let's just simply simplify so 10 times 30 300 divided by 100 it's 3 so 3 minus 0 it's 3 that is why i put here 3 already so 3 divided by 3 we would have 1 and then 1 times 5 we would have 5 and lastly let's combine it with the lower boundary which is lower boundary of the p of 10 class which is 69.5 and with that we can have 74.5 as the value of our p of 10 and we're done now so this time we're going to look for p of 20 so same manner guys we are always gonna start with um, finding the p of k class so same formula kn over 100 and let's just simply substitute so our k is 20 since our desired percentile is p of 20 and for our n here so it's 30 so it's gonna be 30 as well here so 20 times 30 so 600 divided by 100 so 6 so where do you think does p of 20 class belongs so which class interval so looking at our cumulative frequency column do you think it belongs to this one so the the one with the less than cumulative frequency which is 3 so actually no so here 8 so if it's 8 therefore um this comes from fourth rank up to eighth rank then we can say that sixth rank belongs to this class interval and with that let us put highlights so that we can focus with this class interval okay now since we were able to identify already our p of 20 class we can now proceed with the necessary details for our formula so lower boundary of the p of 20 class so our lower limit is 75 so you just simply deduct by 0 0.5 we would have 74.5 and the n we have 30 again cumulative frequency before so or below our p of 20 class so it's 3 so here it's 3 and frequency of the p of 20 class so it's 5 and lastly for our class interval so a while ago we get 5 it's the same data here so it's 5 and just simply substitute again in our formula and uh, of course let's apply the PEMDAS rule properly so let's 
process first those values inside our operations inside the parentheses. So we have here, so 3 divided by 5, it's 0 0.6 multiplied with 5. And lastly would be, let's combine 3 with 74.5. And with that, our P of 20 is 77.5. And we're done. Okay, lastly, for this problem, so let's find out the P of 80 of uh, this given data. So, let's gonna start again with finding the P of 80 class. So, same formula, but of course, the K here must be 80 because the desired percentile is P of 80. And for N, still 30. So, 80 times 30, we do have 2,400 divided by 100, we would have 24. So, which class interval do you think this P of 80 belongs? So, if it's 24, therefore, it's gonna be here in 85 to 89. Okay. And so, since we were able to identify the P of 80 class already, let us now identify all the necessary data for our formula. So, here's the data already and let's simply substitute in our formula again and apply the um, PEMDAS rule properly. And uh, here we go, we have 4 divided by 8, it's 0 0.5 multiplied with 5, we would have 2.5 and lastly, combine it with the lower boundary of the P of 80 class which is 84.5 and with that we can have 87 as the value of P of 80. And we're done. Now let's try another problem but this time I would like you to do it on your own and uh, you resume watching the video if you are done with your answer already for checking. So here's the problem. Luckily, we do have our frequency distribution table already. So now you can proceed with the computation itself of your desired percentile. So based here in our problem. So we have P of 25, P of 56, and P of 75. So now you may um, pause the video for a while. And if you are done, you may check your answer by resuming this video. So here's our solution guys for our second problem. So before anything else, let us complete first our frequency distribution table by filling in the less than cumulative frequency column. I know you are familiar already on how are we going to fill in the less than cumulative frequency column. If not yet, then you may watch our previous video about creating frequency distribution table. Okay, now, so before going on the um, formula itself, let us identify first the classes wherein we can find the P of 25, P of 56, and P of 75. So for P of 25, the class interval where it belongs is 26 to 30. And for P of 56, it belongs to class interval 31 to 35. And lastly, P of 75, it belongs to 36 to 40 class interval. And now let's move on to our formula for desired percentile for group data. So here. And now let's sub simply substitute all the necessary data. I, I do hope you do have your scratch papers with you. You take note of uh, all the necessary data in our formula and now substitute it here. And of course, you apply properly the PEMDAS rule. And with that, we got P of 25 equals 26.64. Okay, now you check first. By the way, we do have some of the hints to check if you get the correct answer. You double check where is the P of 25 class again. It's in 26 to 30, right? So now you, you check your answer here, your value that you've got. 26.64. Do you think it lies within the boundary of your class interval 26 to 30? Yes, it belongs to this class interval. Therefore, um, most probably you get the correct answer. Okay, next is you substitute this time in our formula to get the P of 56. 
so of course you modify all the data that is needed so substitute here so we have uh, apply the PEMDAS rule for the next step and then simplify properly so P of 56 is equal to 33.42 and again you double check does 33.42 lies within the class interval that you've got in P of 56 class a while ago so 31 to 35 Yes, 33.42 lies within the boundary of the class interval 31 to 35. Okay, so that means most probably you've got correct answer. Lastly, so for P of 75, same manner, we are supposed to substitute all the necessary data. So we got here P of 75 is equal to 37.55. And now, again, you double check, it does P of 75 value um, lies within the boundary of the class interval for P of 75 we've got a while ago. So, 37.55 lies within the boundary of 36 to 40 class interval. Very good. And that means most probably you've got correct answer as well. Okay. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you learn about how are we going to solve for the percentile for group data. So see you on our next video lesson and thank you so much again for watching.